Tension in strings, vector application. Question number two. A lamp of mass 15 kg is suspended by two chains making an angle of 70 degrees and 40 degrees with the ceiling. Find the tension in the chain. Well, I've given you this problem earlier and not the solution. And this time, I'm trying to explain you how to solve such a problem. So first thing what we should do is draw the position diagram, right? So we have a lamp of mass, so mass of the lamp is given to us, is suspended by two chains making an angle of 70 and 40 degrees with the ceiling. So let us assume that this is the ceiling, right? And with this ceiling, we will have a string making an angle of 70 degrees. Let's say that is the angle of 70 degrees for us, correct? And another side, let us make an angle of 70 degrees. So now the other side, let me just make this angle. Now, the angles are not very accurate. Let me say this is 70, looks more. Okay, 70 degrees. And this one is, let us say, 40 degrees. Got it? And the mass here is attached, which is 15 kg. This is 15 kg. Now, as you know, mass of every kg is being attracted towards the earth by a force of 9.8 meters per second square, right? And so, it can be written as 15 kg corresponds to 15 times 9.8 and the unit of this force of attraction towards the earth is so many newtons. So we can do this calculation and we say 15 times 9.8 we get 147. So that means 147 newton of force is acting downwards, right? So that becomes the weight, right? When we convert this mass as weight in newtons, so we get this downward force. Now what exactly is happening is that because of this downward force, there is tension in the strings, correct? So this tension, let me call them as T1 and T2. So find the tensions in the chains. So these are the two tensions which we need to calculate. So that is what the real question is. Now to find this, we can solve the triangle. And before we do that, what we need to do here is make a vector diagram. So that vector diagram will help us solve this question. So let me just first analyze the situation a bit more with you. Let's draw a line here which is parallel to the ceiling. Now these two lines are parallel. That's the transverse line. That means this angle is equal to that angle of 40. So this is 40 degrees. Similarly, this angle will be 70 degrees for us. Got it? Between parallel lines, that is the transverse line. So we get these two angles as 40 and 70 degrees. Correct? Now, when we make our vector diagram, then what we can do is, we'll go with this side, for example. Let me just draw here parallel to this side, right? So let me draw a reference line here. I'm showing you how to make this kind of a vector diagram. Now I'll draw a line. Let's say this is my point. That is my point. Let me call this point O, right? So representing this point O, we'll start from here and draw this line, a line parallel to this representing tension T2. So that becomes T2. Let's say this is T2 tension, right? So here we have T2. Now, the same point this force is tension of 70, right? T1 at an angle of 70 is there. Now, as you know, vectors can be translated. So this is same as this kind of. Do you see that? So I'm putting a line parallel to this, this arrow here. Same length and same direction. That means same vector right here. So I have this line here right there, correct? So that is my T1. So this is my T1. I'm drawing in a light color 
so that I can make my corrections if I go wrong. I mean absurdly wrong. Now, so that means I got this, that is tension 2. I got here tension 1. Now these two tensions will actually be supporting the weight, right? So the resultant. So weight is acting downwards and that resultant will be upwards. So I'm just drawing a vertical line from here. This. That is my resultant force, correct? If resultant is equal to the downward force caused by the weight, then the system is in equilibrium. Do you understand? That's the whole idea. So I have this resultant force R, which is acting upwards, right? And actually speaking, the magnitude of this R, let me write here as separate, let me, we can write here. The magnitude of this R is equal to the magnitude of 147 Newtons. Do you understand? Because it has to cancel this out and the direction is just the reverse. So it is acting downwards, R is acting upwards. Correct? And now you can see from your diagram, R is vector R equals to T1 plus T2. So that's my vector diagram, right? So I call this as a position diagram. and this as vector diagram. Correct? So that is my vector diagram. The other good things which we get from here is, let me now see what the angles are. Now this is horizontal, the force T2 makes this angle 40, alternate angle. So this angle is 40 for us. And here, do you see this angle? How much is this? This angle is 70 for us, correct? This is the ceiling and there goes this force T1, ceiling and force, and it makes an angle of 70 degrees, right? And these are 90 degrees for us, correct? So that is how we get a triangle. Now, in this triangle, we know this side. This side is 147, which is the weight, right? So let me write 147 very clearly here, 147 newtons, right? Now if I add 40 and 70, I get 110. Okay, now what are these angles? Now this angle is, if this is 70, that is 90, then this has to be 90 minus 70. So it is 20 degrees. And here, this is 90 degrees, minus 40 will give me 50 degrees. So I got all my angles. Do you see that? Now we will use sine law to calculate or answer. What is the fine? We will use sine law to find tensions T1 and T2. Correct? So sine law is sine of the angle. Let's say, let's start with 20 degrees sine of 20 degrees over what is opposite 20? T2 should be equal to sine of known angle 110 over the known side 147. Do you see that? Now with that I can find T2, correct? So from here I can say T2 is equal to, we'll cross multiply, 147 times sine of 20 degrees divided by sine of 110 degrees. Do you get it? So we can use calculator to find this answer. So you get 147 times sine of 20 equals to divided by sine of 110 equals to 53.5 newtons. Correct? So that is the answer for T2 for us. Now similarly, you can find T1. Now T1 is opposite 
50, right? So this time I'll prefer to write T1 on the top so that I can get faster answer, right? So, so you know, that's my preference. So I said T1 over sine of 50 is equal to the known side and angle, right? 147 over sine of 110 degrees, right? So this implies that T1 is equal to 147 times sine of 50 divided by sine of 110 degrees. And we'll use our calculator. we we'll say 147 times sine of 50 which is equal to 112 point something divided by sine of 110 which is equal to 119.83 119.83 and that is equals to 120 newtons approximately right and now we can write on our answers and the answer is that T1 equals to 120 newtons and T2 equals to 54 newtons right so those are our answers so the answer given here was kind of wrong it should be 120 newtons correct so that is how we solve these kind of questions i hope you understand the concept i hope you get the point how to draw position diagram and the vector diagram to get our answer okay thanks and all the best